losing mum is absolutely destroying and um, God, like, I find it hard to think back on now, like how emotional I was. You know, it was, there is still trauma there. There are still a lot of things that I have to work on with that. As I said, it's a journey for everyone. I could be sitting down, talking to someone, watching the TV, a film, or listening to a bit of music on the radio. It stirs memories and it grips you. It's like a sledgehammer. And the emotion can be like a tidal wave. Yeah. It can just sweep you away. My name's Grace, I'm a clown, <laughs> and I am currently creating this show, Good Grief, which is about death and grief. Yeah. This just in, death is everywhere. Done in a way that you would never, ever expect or forget. So like under here, this will be on stage and this is going to be kind of like some kind of tomb. Be honest. Yes. Be honest. And then. <laughs> <laughs> These are possibly my favourite thing that we've bought for the show. Glittered sunglasses. We're going to have kind of a godlike character within the show. Instead of going for something like wings and, and halos and things, we're trying to imagine heaven as kind of like this crazy, like kind of rave or party that people are going to. We're trying to show that grief can feel like being on a completely different planet and it can feel like no one knows how to communicate with you when you're dealing with grief and that people might feel like a completely different species. So that's why we've got these. I'll tell you a funny thing though, you know, when, I, when my mum and dad died, people didn't know how to talk to me. I am very open. Yeah. I'm, I must say, I am always the person to. Um, I'm the first person to talk about it. I don't believe that grief is something wrong, and it's not. I am not someone to shy away from anything, and I. It's not just me that grieves. There are hundreds and thousands of people out there that are going to grieve today. So if that one person can start to be a little bit more open about it, it will start opening those doors for people to start talking about it as well. I find it hard to think back on now, like how emotional I was. You know, it was, there is still trauma there. There are still a lot of things that I have to work on with that. As I said, it's a journey for everyone. You know, I've lost both of my parents um, and I lost my mum when I was quite young, when I was, you know, 13, almost 14. And it was just before high school. It actually took me three years to accept that she died. You know, you just create this world where she's not actually gone and it makes it so much easier to live with. But I can't really describe it. It's just, it is just stone cold fear that you see on someone's face when you talk about dead parents. People are really, really terrified of their loved one's mortality, so they prefer not to think about it, and that's where the conversation stops. Yeah. Grief's like the tarantula in the room. You know it's there, but you don't know where it is. And it's, you know, it's gonna bite you. You know, it will come to life and you will see it. And it will bite you one day. Why are you keen to see your story and your voice shown in a way with, the, with this clowning and this physical comedy? You make a very yeah. bitter pill into a nice sugary treat. Yeah. Yes. I, I can't wait. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Can I just see that last bit with the eyes? So I'm going to do the... You do the... Yeah. Yeah. We take those interviews and we take the recordings and then we use those in the show as kind of like a soundtrack to what you can see happening on stage. Yeah. OK, so it's like a tarantula um, bites you. Da -da 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 -da. Um, you know it's there, but you don't know where it's going to get you. Um, you can be scared of it, da -da 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 -da. but you're going to find it at some point. And it's going to grow, and it's going it's, it's to bite you. Higher, higher, higher. Lovely, there you go, it's about the speed. And, yeah. then, and then the bass is going to drop, and then it's going to go <laughs> Lovely, yeah. okay, fab. The reason that we started doing the show is because um, a good friend of ours, Tim Miles, who was a comedy lecturer when I went to university, he passed away this year um, in much. April from cancer. But before he passed away, he asked us, he's like, can Ugly Bucket make a 10 minute piece about death for my memorial service? 
um, which was probably the strangest commission that we have ever had. Hope he likes it. He'll be dead. <laughs> So we're going to go see if people are interested in sharing some stories with us, um, sharing some poetry with us, or just showing us what they've been working on in that session. We're focusing the whole session today on grief, OK? We've been working on improvisation, devising, working with props, but today's pinpoint is grief. If you went to a GP with a problem, say you were socially isolated, you had a mental health issue, instead of just putting you on medication or having a clinical intervention, social prescribing gives you that opportunity and platform to meet new people, do something creative, it allows you to explore these issues that you're facing alone in, um, in an environment where people are trained to look after you and they know how to adapt to your needs. Perhaps the most traumatic for me was losing my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she had three young children and yeah. I sort of, although they stayed with their father, I was a big part of their life and doing yeah. for them as yeah, I promised I would. You took on that promised I would. Yeah. But I never grieved myself and yeah. I, f I feel all the things that are about to me yeah. seem to take that role on, you know, mm. I'm the... Put the rescue around. around. Yeah. 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 But I, all my Inside. grief I feel is piling up yeah. Yeah. from here. Every day, it's there. My wife's been dead now 10 years come November. It only seems like yesterday sometimes. Mm. Some days there's, I could be sitting down, talking to someone, watching the TV, a film, or listening to a bit of music on the radio, and it stirs memories, and it grips you. Yeah. Like, because you're not thinking about it, it, it happens, it's like a sledgehammer, and the emotion can be like a tidal wave. Yeah. It can just sweep you away. I go and visit my wife at the cemetery uh, at least three times a week. Yeah. So when I go, I always talk to her <laughs> as if she's there. Yeah. It's my way of coping. Yeah, and everyone's got their own way. If we record this, I'll press record on my phone and then I'll give you a signal and then okay. knock him dead. <laughs> there we go. Distant lady, I visited my wife today and had a little chat. I talked about many things but mainly this and that. Tales about the grandkids, the things they say and do. Playing in football tournaments, ballet dancing in their tutus. These are some of the topics I talked about and said. I got no reply as usual because my lovely wife is dead. She is always with me when all is said and done. She was my girl and a fantastic mum. My lads and my daughters-in-laws and my missus were all tea tanks. I was the busiest can lad <laughs> in Liverpool in that. I get the urge sometimes to get up and make a cup of tea. I live alone and I make a cup of tea when that urge comes because if I don't, it stays. Yeah. And I make it. <laughs> I can't express you how good it makes me feel, <laughs> but that cup of tea is going nowhere yeah. except down the, uh, the sink. Even though I'm being sincere what I've wrote, yeah. I can see the, the funny side in relation to the message, what I've wrote. If it does good, <laughs> I'm over the moon yeah. because I didn't think I'd be able to contribute to anything like that. It's all different ages, people from different backgrounds, so many different perspectives, so many different stories. And I think bringing that all together and to be able to perform it in Liverpool is going to be so exciting because it's just such an electric city and the community is incredible. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was just talking about this experience and now it's happening. I was in the taxi thinking, wow, you spoke to people that are going to do a clown show about your dead parents, basically. It is tugging on my heartstrings a bit because, as I said, it's something that I've always dealt with on my own, but always wanted to, you know, talk about it. Of course, you know, the people that I've spoken about, you know, my parents are always in the back of my mind. Hi, I'm feeling extremely nervous. It's just because it's new, it's new show, moment. and you're like, oh my god, are people gonna like it? <gasps> oh. yeah. I'm really, really excited for um, the the interviewees to see what we've done with their 
thoughts and their feelings and experiences and see mm. how they react. I think that might be really surreal for them. Yeah. It's the biggest challenge we've ever had, so it's about, it's like pulling it off. I think we will. I can't wait for this to start. <laughs> I'm really excited, but back in Aves. I, I am back in Aves. But to be honest with you, in a way, it's, it's a privilege to be a part of it. I, I'm just amazed uh, what I've noticed such people and that in itself touched me uh, and I can see me getting emotion here and I, I, I can do uh, I'm not afraid to have emotions showing so if it helps somebody I'll be thrilled and I know my wife would be thrilled with that uh, if the shoe was on the other foot she'd say exactly the same thing she was that way else, you know and she wouldn't mind people laughing at me I don't mind people laughing at her either <laughs> Grief's like the tarantula in the room. You know it's there, but you don't know where it is. And it's funny because Facebook, everybody just says all these great things on Facebook, you know, but no, no, no one came to my house. Yeah. I've never felt so alone in my whole life as I did for those first three months. Do you know what? I look a bit like my mum today, or, you know, I've got my dad's chin and my dad's nose. <laughs> I can't express to you how good it makes me feel, <laughs> but that's a couple of things going nowhere, yeah. except down the, uh, the sink. It was a privilege to be part of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, stop. No, no, no. Sleep. It wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible. No. I couldn't be happier. I've got no words. But it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's nice to see how far you've come from the start as well. I think it's really important to see that. Because um, it is a really, really long journey. I would say that just because someone else's life has stopped, yours doesn't stop with it. Always be grateful for your own strength. Yeah, life is a party. 